Another Fox and Friends exclusive. Senator Tom Cotton becomes the first U.S. official inside El Salvador's terrorist confinement center. There he is. The maximum security jail was built in 2022 after the country's president declared a state of emergency to crack down on violent gangs. And it seems to be working. Homicides in El Salvador dropped 70% in 2023. Joining us now with more on what he saw, Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton. Senator you heard you knew El Salvador had an election. The president gets another uh, gets another term. That prompted you to reach out. Why? Yeah, Brian, what's happened in El Salvador over the last couple of years is really remarkable. You know, it wasn't that long ago that El Salvador was one of the most dangerous places in the world, on par with countries in the middle of wars. Um, but a couple of years ago, President Bukele uh, and his uh, legislature instituted a state of emergency. The police cracked down. There were large-scale roundups of MS-13 and other gangs. And now El Salvador rivals Canada for one of the safest places in the Americas. Uh, it's just a, a lesson about what happens when you take crime seriously, when you uh, restore public order, what I saw there was remarkable. You had young kids playing soccer in the afternoon, women jogging during the twilight hours, things that simply could not have happened two years ago. And in my conversations with the president, one thing that he stressed is that you have to take such measures when crime run rampant, when public order breaks down. Something I worry about happening in some of America's cities. When I landed at the airport in San Salvador, in fact, the front page of the newspaper had a story about an outbreak of violence in Washington, D.C. It's a reminder that we can never let our guard down against crime in this country. Senators, it also give you a sense of what is indeed possible, who people who think that Central America is hopeless, South America will never reform, that they can't get things together, and that we're always going to have this problem with immigration? Yeah, that's right, Brian. These are problems that can be solved. Um, again, just a few years ago, people couldn't go outside their homes. They had to pay extortion money. Gangs would show up for your 12-year-old boy and say, we're taking him to be one of us or we'll kill you. Or they'll say, we're going to take your 12-year-old girl for prostitution. Otherwise, we're going to kill your whole family. Now, they can live a normal life. They don't have to pay extortion. They can go out in the evening. They can lead their business. And you can have things like economic growth and uh, education, which is what the president wants to focus on in this new term, that he just won by more than 80 percent as one of the most popular leaders in the country. Mm -hmm. So it goes to show that these problems can be solved, but sometimes you can also be a victim of your own success. Look where New York was before Rudy Giuliani came along with a series of great police chiefs in the 1990s, but look where it's deteriorated to since Bill de Blasio took office. You can never forget that, uh, de that order is not the natural state of mankind. It has to be carefully preserved and cultivated with strong law enforcement and, in this case, strong and big prisons uh, for ruthless gang members. I mean, they, they arrested tens of thousands. They did uh, release about 7,000. Maybe they overarrested. I've seen some of the stories and they've let them out. Uh, but right now, the people of El Salvador can walk the streets. You also mentioned that 300,000 people living here, expats, uh, they voted overwhelmingly for this president. So they appreciate what's going on. Senator, thanks so much for doing this. Not many people are talking about what you're doing. This is called going to the grassroots of the problem. And this is one of the answers. A shame the vice president didn't go with you. Senator Tom Cotton, thank you. Thank you, Brian.